he is the hod of oncology and onco surgery associated with the hospital uh, thank you so much dr anil for taking out time to join us for this informative session uh, we're going to specifically talk about lung cancer and how it it has evolved to become one of the leading uh, causes of cancer related death among men and women so um, uh, what do you think what are the reasons why it has evolved to become such a such a at a uh, you know affect people at such a massive scale and um, does the symptoms go unnoticed or people are now more uh, you know exposed to the risk factors of uh, lung cancer what are some of the reasons see there there are lots of reason behind this like uh, earlier we, we didn't had the investigation tools with us okay mm -hmm. and patient used to die without knowing the reasons so that's the main reason other reasons are more uh, pollution na nowadays which uh, we can see uh, in the delhi ncr or, or in other st other uh, states of our country there are more pollution and pollution is one of the major causes uh, of the carcinoma lung third thing is lifestyle changes like now more and more people they have started smoking even the females we can see that they uh, have started smoking so it's also a major one of the major causes for lung cancer other is the industrial causes like uh, asbestosis asbestosis uh, is uh, inhalation of the cement material and uh, what it causes it causes a certain type of uh, lung cancer again so all mm -hmm. these are the few uh, and third third is like the genetic causes like the marriage in the close society so mm -hmm. it uh, causes more and more uh, exposure to the genetic mutations and uh, uh, inheritation of the mutated genes so that's also one of the cause okay uh, so my next question would be what is the basic between a basic difference between small cell um, uh, lung carcinoma and non small cell lung carcinoma how does it differ and uh, which is the most um, you know more severe form of lung cancer see basically lung cancer can be uh, uh, divided into small cell and non small cell and non small cell again can be sub further subdivided into squamous and non squamous type of uh, carcinomas so because why we have classified why we have done the classification it is because all the uh, different type of categories they have different prognosis they have different treatments all, uh, also but major form if uh, i explain you we have divided into small cell and non small cell they have a different histopathology different treatment and different prognosis the small cell lung cancer is basically more virulent one and it spreads in a very fast manner okay and the best part of this tumor is this if we give the treatment it responds also it responds very well to the radiotherapy it responds to the chemotherapy and uh, but one should take care like uh, we should uh, watch uh, the any uh, after the treatment all the tumor has gone we should be in a uh, proper follow up because this this cancer can come again any time and and the second one is a non small cell lung cancer non small cell lung cancer see basically in initial stages it is a curable but in the advanced like stage 3 4 it is non curable but definitely treatment is there for that also and it also responds but not that in fast manner just like uh, uh, not in that fast manner like uh, uh, small cell uh, lung cancer uh, so it's like that okay okay uh this this makes a lot of things clear and um uh, when it comes to you know cancer metastasis is lung um, uh, one of the main organs where can cancer can actually metastasize to like in case of liver cancer patients advanced cancer cases of uh, liver cancer it is very common for them to be uh, you know diagnosed with uh, lung metastasis at a later stage see basically whenever the patient comes to us of lung cancer there are two or three suspicions uh, with us like first whether it is a primary lung cancer or not second will be whether it has metastasized from other areas like uh, breast cancer patients liver cancer patient kidney cancer patients or uh, any squamous cell carcinoma of the skin so the all these are few cancers and colon like gi tract these are the few cancer which most commonly uh, metastasize to lung okay mm -hmm. then uh, what happens once we have come up so how we differentiate with the primary lung cancer to uh, from the metastasis so usually what happens like if it is a metastasis it most of the time it is multiple okay if there are multiple lesion most of the time it is a metastasis we should search for 
primary at some other area okay but sometimes metastasis can be uh, solitary also so in that case there are certain other investigations which we do and on that basis we uh, try to find out uh, whether uh, it's a primary or secondary because the treatment is again different because all treatment depends upon the origin of the tumor from where it has come if it, it has come from the kidney we give the treatment according to the to, to, to that area if it has come from uh, breast then we give treatment according to the breast area so it's like that okay um, when it comes to specifically about uh, you know primary lung cancer then how do you think has the treatment evolved in the past decade what are the some of the most you know treatment options that are available uh, for lung cancer patients now okay so basically lung cancer is one of that cancer in which there is a very good evolution uh, with regard to the treatment okay earlier uh, i uh, i remember when i was a student of mbbs or md so uh, during that those days we didn't had much treatment for lung cancer okay and patient uh, if it was in a stage 3 or 4 patient used to die after getting the treatment also but nowadays there has been a lot of changes i can see when i was uh, being trained for my uh, oncology and nowadays there's a huge difference because now that how how it has differed earlier when the patient used to come with us of lung cancer especially the non small cell lung cancer we used to give only surgery we were having three options with us only surgery or radiotherapy or chemotherapy chemotherapy was also very basic one and uh, the uh, five year survival for stage 3 was around uh, 40% or 50% okay but nowadays uh, i think that uh, within two or three years or five years there's a dr drastic change in the treatment of this uh, non small cell lung cancer what we do is that whenever patient comes to us with a non small cell lung cancer we get certain molecular markers done okay we just try to see which targeted therapy will respond okay will respond to this tumor so we get the molecular markers done we see whether it is a pdl1 positive or not so that we can use uh, um, by, on that basis we can uh, uh, we can know whether we can use the yes, immunotherapy or not. Right. okay so uh, it's like that and then uh, what happens like when we get the investigation done then apart from the chemotherapy radiotherapy and surgery we have other options like targeted therapy is also there nowadays then mm -hmm. immunotherapy is also there and if we see the chemotherapy we have the latest uh, chemotherapeutic drugs which have, uh, which is a word like pemetrexate is one of the uh, chemotherapeutic drug which, which we give in the uh, non small cell lung cancer and the best part is that lung cancer whenever a patient comes to us we try to put patient on first targeted therapy because chemotherapy are very toxic okay chemotherapy we leave it on the last resort first we try to get the molecular markers done then we see if this patient is suitable for that targeted therapy or not because when the markers are positive then only we give that targeted therapy because you know that if we use chemotherapy and if we use targeted therapy in a uh, suitable patients then targeted therapy is much more effective mm -hmm. with less toxicity as compared to chemotherapy so nowadays earlier we used to give directly chemotherapy but now when patient comes to us we get the test done we see if the patient is suitable for immunotherapy or uh, targeted therapy we start the patient on targeted or immunotherapy then when patient fails on these therapies then only we give chemotherapy or um, while doing the test when the patient is not suitable for chemo, uh, this targeted therapy and immunotherapy then we put patients on chemotherapy so chemotherapy is the last resort uh, which we give because of its toxicity and less effectivity also okay okay so uh, that again makes a lot of things clear because when it comes to specifically to lung cancer then people generally have a mindset that you know uh, the progno prognosis is poor and the outcome is, is going to be poor and you know once you are diagnosed with cancer in the lung then that's you know the end of discussion for them so you know that makes a lot of things clear because not everybody knows that targeted therapy and immunotherapy are available nowadays for uh, lung cancer treatment but uh, what about uh, surgery uh, in what cases is surgery the preferred mode of treatment like lobectomy and all um, um, in which cases are you know surgeries performed mm -hmm. see basically uh, be it any cancer except exceptions of you if it is an early stage like stage 1 and or stage 2 
the most of the cancers are completely curable so nothing to worry we have come up with a lot of different type of surgeries latest surgeries lot of different type of chemotherapies targeted therapies immunotherapies latest type of radiation therapies also like igrt like uh, um, um, imrt intensity modulated radiotherapy and uh, there are certain other uh, types of radiotherapy which co coordinates with our breathing pattern also so mm -hmm. we uh, so as not to miss the target in that cases so there are a lot of uh, progress in the field of treatment so we were talking about surgery when is the indication for surgery see surgery is to take out the tumor in toto so wherever in early stages if the disease is localized less uh, not lymph nodes nearby areas are not involved in that cases we give uh, we do surgery okay surgery followed by we see the histopathology report if there's any positive margins or there's a bad prognostic indicator in a pathology report so it will decide whether to go ahead with chemotherapy adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant radiotherapy because in early stages we try to avoid the adjuvant treatment but if the histopathology report suggests like poor prognostic features are there like there are more chances of recurrence in histopathology report then we give whole treatment to the patient because we don't want to take risk we give mm -hmm. surgery followed by radiotherapy and chemotherapy all in, in most of the time mm -hmm. and how is the prognosis generally like with all these treatment facilities available nowadays for lung cancer patients what should you know typically a person uh, diagnosed with stage 2 or 3 or 4 lung cancer uh, expect uh, in terms of outcome now see basically earlier when the patient was the patient used to come in stage 3 4 the lifespan was only uh, we met a uh, one year or one and a half year at the max okay but nowadays if the patient is in early stage stage 1 2 patient can be cured also completely okay but if it is in a stage 3 4 nothing to worry because earlier Stage four patient, as I told you, like uh, the lifespan was around three, four months, six months, ten months. That's it. But nowadays, by using the immunotherapies and chemotherapies and newer chemotherapy drugs and targeted therapy, we can, in a, even in a stage three, we can extend the survival of the patient by four to five years. And I think that's a, a good and handsome amount of time which we give to the patient with a good quality of life. That's actually very good and very positive to hear as well. And um, uh, my last question would be, you know, cancer is now being considered as an epidemic and something that is, you know, more of, uh, more associated with lifestyle choices now. What would be your, you know, your tips or your recommendation to people to prevent these, you know, these kind of cancers uh, from forming in their body? See, uh, I would like to say to all my uh, friends all over who are listening to me, like prevention is better than cure always right. so okay. you should take care of the small symptoms you should screen your if you are at a high risk your family members have uh, lung cancer or any cancer you should get yourself checked regularly screened regularly and even if the small cuff which is not being corrected uh, by normal uh, treatment one should get uh, himself or herself checked properly okay first second thing is Change your lifestyle. Be just inculcate the healthy habits in yourself and in your kids, like uh, doing regular exercises, avoid fatty meals, and avoid the pollution, of course, smoking, all these. Everybody knows about uh, these risk factors, but I think that we should follow all these things. And definitely, we can prevent ourselves by 50% also by not getting the cancer. Right. So thank you so much, Dr. Nanil. It was it was really very informational for the audience and particularly for me as well to know about all the therapies that are nowadays available for cancer treatment. And uh, we'll be joining you very soon again on a similar topic um, related to cancer treatment. So again, uh, I'd like to say thank you for taking our time. Thank you for inviting me, Guni. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.